I'm just going to explain some of the kit that I'm using for making this colloidal silver. Um, a lot of the stuff that I have around me here, um, I managed to dig out of my workshop leftovers from jobs that I've done in the past. Now this is uh, a wax pot, um, a wax pot heater. This is, this is the wax pot itself that's used for um, taking the hair off of various parts of ladies' bodies um, in a professional salon and I use this for um, heating something else. It's a very cost effective way of producing a very cheap heater. As part of that job, I have to adapt this size down to a much smaller size with a, a thick, it's around about half inch thick aluminium sleeve. Now this half inch thick aluminium sleeve acts as a wonderful heat sink and it slows down all the, um, the energy changes that take place from the tubular heater that's around the outside of this case. Um, there is a thermostat that controls this heater um, and I've calibrated it here with a mark to about 40 degrees C. Now for the job that I had to do I have to modify it further and stop to make sure that it can't go above 50 degrees C. So that's what this cutout is for. Um, and this is normally covered over with a label. But in this particular instance the heater went wrong, the thermostat didn't work properly, so it was never used. I took it all apart, had a go at fixing it, and I have been able to make it work again, which is great because I can now use it for my colloidal silver heater. The two silver probes, two millimeter diameter, are held in this piece of um, perspex with cable glands, which have got a rubber seal in the end. And this third device here is a thermistor to check the temperature of the fluid. The thermistor actually feeds into a standard cheap room thermostat that I happen to have left over from another job. And I've just bolted that thermostat onto the top of a control box. And we'll take a look at what's in that control box in a second. Um, the control box has got a power switch on it and there is a connection out to the two electrodes and on the back here we've got power in and power out. The power out feeds the wax pot and power in just comes from the mains, 240 volts. I'm not an electronics engineer but I did manage to adapt the design and fit it onto one of these prototyping boards. Um, these LEDs are on wires just so that I can poke them into the casing. We've got our 240 volts coming in here which is reduced down to 12 volts AC. Now the 12 volts AC then goes round and feeds this transformer with 12 volts AC. The 12 volts AC on its way round is picked up and transformed down to 12 volts DC for feeding the electronic circuit here. Um, and then the other side of it is transformed up again to 115 volts AC. And that in turn is then, half of the wave is then used to produce a DC 50 volt supply, which is fed out of here to the electrodes. Um, the clever piece of this is to stop the electrodes from furring up every 40 seconds this changeover contact here swaps the electrodes over so the electrodes continually keep running from cathode to anode, anode to cathode, etc. In essence this is still the same circuit that was shown on the Hungarian website. I've just adapted it slightly in that I've used a very cheap mains to 12 volt transformer as opposed to their big black box transformer that they used. And what's in the box? is just the power supplies that feed the room thermostat which controls the heater and uh, we've got an outlet connector here for the two electrodes and that in turn connects up to the circuit board so we just plug in the LEDs and pop the lid on. I'm currently waiting for a, a voltmeter um, that I, a little voltmeter panel that I can put on the side here um, but in the meantime what I'm going to use I'm going to use this small adapter here which enables me to read the voltage coming out across these two electrodes. So what I'm going to do is just interpose in the circuit
my voltmeter, which is basically monitoring the voltage across this open circuit here on these two electrodes. When we turn it on, there's 50 volts difference between those two electrodes and at the moment it's showing minus. And after about 40 seconds, it's changed over the other way. So now it's reading plus 50 volts as opposed to minus 50 volts and the anode and cathode have swapped over. As I mentioned earlier, I had to adapt this liner, this heatsink liner down from one size to another size to suit my application. It just so happens that I was able to find a jam jar which is exactly the right size to fit in there and it takes about 300 ml of water. I previously washed this jar out with the purified water. Right, we will just check before we start to see what this water quality is. We'll put that on to hold and it reads one part per million. So I will just turn this on and it's reading minus 50 volts roughly on there and we'll drop that into the water and you can see and dropping it into the water has made virtually no difference, 49 volts. So it's still basically a virtual open circuit in there because the water is not conducting very much at all. Now over a period of time this voltage will gradually drop down as the conductivity of the water increases. But we're not going to do that yet. What we're going to do is to We've just turned the heater on. So when the water gets up to 35 degrees C, the thermocouple will say on here 35. Now this thermostat in turn will disconnect the power to this unit completely so that there will be no more power on the heater. The temperature will continue to rise in the water because of the thermal energy stored in this jacket here. In the meantime, you'll get heat loss and this will gradually creep down to 34 and a half degrees C. Now, as soon as this gets down to around about 34 and a half, 34.2, something in that sort of region, degrees C, it will re-establish the power to this. And then this thermostat will carry on and heat this back up again. So it'll oscillate between 36 and 34 degrees C. So we should come back in about an hour when I expect the temperature to be up to 35 degrees C and then we can turn this unit on and start the process running. Right, the temperature's just gone up to 37 for the first time. It'll, it'll oscillate now. This is the first cycle. So we'll turn it on and we'll start the timer off. And you can see that we've got a voltage of about already 44. That's about four parts per minute. <clears throat> Voltage is currently 13, it's about here, down to here, it's about 4 parts per million, that's about right. Just going to give it a quick stir. And we're up to 7 parts now. nine parts per million which might be eight parts per million because it started off at one <laughs> 